Hello, Paradise Panther artists. This is Mrs. Telfer, and I'm excited to share with you our last master artist for this school year. His name is Grant Wood, and he was born in 1891 and died in 1942. He was an American painter who is best known for his paintings of the Midwest. His most famous painting was American Gothic, a painting that some of you might recognize today. So let's get ready to learn about Wood's early years on the farm and how he became a professional artist. Have you ever been to a dentist? Has the dentist ever examined your teeth? Go ahead and show me a great big smile if you have clean and healthy teeth. That's great. Okay, now you can close your mouth and relax as I tell you what a dentist can possibly have to do with art. When our artist, Grant Wood, was planning his most famous painting, he needed two people to be models, one woman and one man. He thought for a long time about the faces of all his friends, family, and people in his small town. And guess who he chose as the man to model for his painting? It was his dentist, Dr. Byron but he was still on the lookout for just the right woman to pose with his dentist. Grant had one sister, and of course, he knew her face very well. He chose Nan, his sister, to pose with his dentist friend, Dr. Byron. So let's see a photograph of these two models that Grant Wood chose to pose for his painting. Do you think they'll look happy and excited about being chosen? Take a look. Can you make your expression match the faces you see here? Nan and Byron are far from looking happy. When Grant first asked each of them to pose, they both said no. But he kept asking and asking, and finally they agreed but they had one important request with which Grant had to agree. They wanted him to promise that when he painted their portrait, no one would ever recognize them. They wanted to keep it a secret from their friends and neighbors. Now, you've seen the people who Grant painted in the foreground of his canvas. Let's discover what he chose to be in the background. In fact, he chose the background even before he selected Nan and Byron. That's how important it was. He drove around his neighborhood until he found a house that really caught his attention. And then he took this photograph. Grant Wood said, this house gave me an idea to find two people who, by their severely straight-laced characters, would fit into this home. To make sure he got all the details exactly right, he took this photograph. Mr. Wood used the expression straight-laced to refer to the people who would live in that house. To get an idea of how he posed his sister and dentist, let's pretend you have tightly pulled laces wound all around your body from your neck down to your waist. Go ahead and show me how you would sit. Sit up straight and tall with a straight, rigid back. Is that how Grant Wood posed Nan and Dr. Byron in the foreground of this house? I think it's time we look at the finished painting. This is the very famous painting titled American Gothic by Grant Wood. It isn't a large painting, but it has had an extremely big impression on the world ever since Grant entered it into a national art contest. When it was first shown, crowds gathered around it and ignored all the other paintings. Grant Wood became almost an instant celebrity. 
Let's first focus on the foreground. Do the man and woman look straight laced? Do they look like they have tightly pulled laces all around their body from their neck to their waist? Yes, they do. Would you recognize Nan and Byron even if they were dressed differently? Yes. So did Mr. Wood follow their request not to paint them so people would recognize them? No, he certainly did not. In fact, Byron was furious at Wood for breaking that promise. At his dental office, people began asking him, you're not going to use a pitchfork on me, are you? Do you think Dr. Byron liked that joke? No, and for several years, Dr. Byron would not admit that he had posed for Grant. Even though he didn't change their faces, Grant Wood did change many other things in his models. Let's find the changes together. Go ahead and point to what is different about Nan. If you are pointing to her hair, her clothes, or even the shape of her face, you're right. To make sure Nan looked very straight-laced, Grant had her comb her hair straight down toward her ears with a part in the exact center. But do you see a lock of her hair hanging down? Mr. Wood let that lock of hair escape to show that she was, after all, human and not so perfect. He also changed the shape of her face to make it longer and more oval. Go ahead and make a circle with your hands. Now move your hands to make the circle longer, to become an oval. He wanted her face to be longer, just like the dentist's long face. Now make a really long oval, just like the man's face, stretching your hands almost as far as you can. Mr. Wood was determined to place their long lined faces next to the long lined house. His dentist naturally had a very long face and so he changed his sisters to match as well. Let's now look at their clothing, which he changed from the way they always dressed. He wanted to show them as father and daughter and good, solid, simple, hardworking people from Iowa. That's where Mr. Wood lived. But where is Iowa? Let's take a look at a map of the United States. Can you find Iowa on the map? It's in the middle of the country and it's an orangey red color. It's in the middle of what is called America's heartland, the farming center of the United States. Iowa's flatlands and low rolling hills make good farmland. Grant Wood planned to show the plain beauty of the Iowa landscape and its people. He discovered his own way of painting his surroundings that made him popular and famous. Let's return to American Gothic to find out more about the importance of the house. The original house from the painting still stands today. It was built by local carpenters in a style called Gothic. Grant took that word and included it in the title of his painting. When he first saw the real house, he thought it a little strange that such a simple house in Iowa would have such a fancy window, almost like a church. Let's see how Grant combined the foreground and background together in so many clever ways. Go ahead and see if you can find some of the same details that I do. First, can you notice that their mouths are shut as tightly as the shades of the porch windows? Go ahead and point to their mouths 
and then point to the shades in the windows. Can you find where the shape of the large pitchfork held by the father is seen again in the stitching of the father's blue overalls? Go ahead and trace the outline of the pitchfork and then use your finger to trace the same outline in the stitching of his clothing. Well done. Now point to where the small dotted circle pattern and color on Nan's apron is repeated in the Gothic window curtain. Go ahead and point to the same pattern you see on her apron as the pattern in the window. Very good. Now find the vertical stripes on the father's shirt. Do you see how the stripes go up and down? Just as the lines go up and down on the boards of the house and also on the tines of the pitchfork? Okay, here's one last search. Go ahead and start at the pointed peak of the house. Now follow the diagonal lines of the roof on both sides. Do you see how the roof ends at the people's heads on both sides? Doesn't that cleverly bring it all together? The house, the father, and the daughter? Great job. Grant Wood grew up on a small farm in Iowa until he was 10 years old and then moved to town. He brought farm life into many of his paintings. His self-portrait shows that he came from a farm. How can you tell? Well, we can see crops and also a water mill in the background. Grant Wood's family raised cows, turkeys, ducks, and chickens. He loved all his farm animals, just like pets. Can you guess which pet he loved the most? Let's see. Did you guess that he loved his chickens the most? He also loved to paint chickens. Here we see his favorite kind of chicken, a speckled Plymouth Rock hen. Can you imagine a wild chicken posing for a painting? No, I can't either, but Grant tried. He let the hen stay in his studio overnight so she could pose for him during the day. Look at the beautiful moon pattern of feathers. Do you suppose she sat quietly on her nest full of eggs while Grant painted her? Here, a city lady has come to the country to buy a chicken from a farm lady. Go ahead and point to the city lady. There is no doubt because of the way they are dressed, which one is which. Can you imagine how hard it is to hold a grown chicken in your arms? Didn't Wood do a good job with painting the feather pattern of the chicken? It is realistic, just like the living bird he had sitting in his art studio. Besides feeding the chickens, another of Grant's chores as a boy was to milk the cows. Let's read this all together. Grant said, All the really good ideas I ever had came to me while I was milking a cow. So he drew on those good memories with this simple painting. Are there more pattern or more plain areas in this painting by Mr. Wood? Well, it is about even. We can see patterns in the cow, the shirt, and we can see plain in the ground, the overalls, and the barn. Is it a comical view of milking a cow? Yes, it is. 
Grant's parents were very poor. They didn't have a telephone, a radio, cars, or even electricity. Grant entertained himself by drawing all kinds of pictures of the things around him. The state of Iowa is known for growing one particular food crop. It's used as feed for livestock and farm animals. And people like to eat it too. Can you guess what crop it is? Let's see. Iowa is known for growing corn. The rich soil of Iowa has made the state famous for growing more corn than any other state in the Union. Spring is planting time, and soon after young corn plants are shooting up all over Iowa farmland. Let's take a look at Grant's painting of those young plants. Do you see the rows of young corn growing in the field? That is the title of this painting, Young Corn. How many people do you see working in the cornfield? You're right, there's three. Did he paint the father and his two children very big? No, he didn't. What do you think Wood thought was more important, the land or the people? Yes, the land. Farmland and nature are what we notice first in this landscape. Even the farmhouse looks small compared to the land around it. Grant didn't want this to look like a photo. Anyone can do that, he said. So he thought back to the way he remembered it as a boy. The hills seemed fatter, smoother, the roads curvier, the trees puffier. That's how he changed it. It was a style all his own. Have you noticed the roly-poly trees? Their round shapes remind people of a certain green vegetable. Can you guess what it is? They look like broccoli. Do you think the trees really looked like this? No. Grant chose to make patterns in the trees to decorate this landscape. Now let's travel seasonally from spring to fall on a farm. It's time to harvest the corn, cut and bale the hay, and plow the fields. It's the busiest time of year on a farm. Let's look closely at the haystacks in the middle of the painting. Are all of the haystacks the same size? No, that's right. Why not? Well, the size of the haystacks depends on its location. The haystacks decrease in size as you go further up on the canvas. Can you find the very, very small haystacks way off in the distance? Yes, they're on the last hill and they are just dots. By using very large shapes in the foreground and very small shapes in the background, Grant Wood is showing us perspective. This landscape has depth. Can you find the farmhouse and the barn? Yes, they're at the top of the painting. How do we know that they are far away? Well, you can see that they are smaller as they are placed further away in the painting. Your landscapes will also use size and placement to create perspective. Quickly and silently count how many different patterns you can find in these hills. Yes, there's about seven different patterns. Are some of the hills just a smooth texture without a pattern? Yes, 
Do the trees and the shrubs have lots of pattern? Yes. What colors did he mostly use for fall plowing? We can see brown, yellow, and green. These are the same colors of nature you will use to make your beautiful Grant Wood landscape. You will be adding texture and patterns and will be painting your own broccoli trees, just like he did. Can you find the plow in the foreground? Grant always included old fashioned farm tools rather than more advanced machinery to match his vision of a simple life. This horse-drawn plow makes the parallel lines for planting next spring that you see in the two foreground hills. Right now, go ahead and take your hands and stretch them out in front of you to make parallel lines. These parallel lines are just like what we see the plow doing to make rows in the fields. The lines give wonderful texture to the rich brown soil. Do the hills take up nearly all of this canvas? Yes, they do. And the sky is only a very narrow rectangle at the top. Wood's style became well known and very popular for both his portraits and landscapes. But his most popular painting is still American Gothic. This famous painting is often copied in a funny way. Let's enjoy these copies and then we will meet our American master artist, Grant Wood. Meet Mr. Grant Wood. Did you notice he posed in overalls? Just like his dentist friend in American Gothic. To make a point that he was an Iowa boy, nearly all his official portrait photos show him wearing overalls. He felt awkward when reporters interviewed him. He was most comfortable when he was painting in his overalls. Mr. Wood was an art teacher off and on throughout his life. Do you think he dressed like a professor in a suit and tie? You're right, he didn't. He still wore his overalls most of the time. To be a good American artist like Grant Wood, you need to know the art words you see here. First, Go ahead and show me with your fingers the shape of an oval. Now, using your two hands, stretch them straight out and show me parallel lines. Great job! Next, go ahead and point to something in the room where you are that has a pattern. Excellent! Now, help me fill in the missing art words that we have been learning all year. A picture of land is called a landscape. A picture of a person is called a portrait. The front of a painting is called the foreground. The back of a painting is called the background. The opposite of dreamlike or make-believe is realistic. The way things look or feel is called texture. A technique that enables artists to add depth 
to a painting is called perspective. Excellent. You all are definitely ready to create your own American masterpiece in your art activity. Well done. Way to go, Paradise Panther artists. We just finished traveling to the Midwest to explore Grant Wood's upbringing on the farm, and we analyzed his most famous painting, American Gothic. Over the course of this year, you have learned many different styles and art techniques, and I am very proud of all the hard work you have put into your art activities. I can't wait for another great year of art as we discover even more master artists next year. Bye for now, Paradise Panther artists.